Hi everyone. Joining me today is Dusan Kovacic, uh, Chief Investment Officer at uh, Rockaway Blockchain Fund. Welcome. Hi. Thanks for having me. To kick it off, a few questions about you. When and how did you first get exposed to crypto? That's a good question. So, I would say it's it it it. I was in a stage of my life when I left the when I left the corporate job, and I was I I I was myself focusing on I I'm going to build a business. I I I was really focused into getting into the entrepreneurial space and and to be an entrepreneur. But I didn't really know what what to do at the time. It was 2016. And uh, I was, I have a software engineering background. I have a master's degree in software engineering. I was, I, I was working in a corporate environment, like focusing on, on, on software engineering at, at, at the high. Like I, I was managing a system uh, as, as a project manager that was delivering packages uh, to 200 countries for DHL Express. So, uh, and, I, and I left because I was not fulfilled, like, like really dealing with the min, middle management in, in the corporate space was, was not very fulfilling. And I, I started to explore crypto. Uh, as, as, as one of the ways that, that I could be uh, that I could be looking at, and it, it really uh, got me interested because suddenly I realized that the uh, people with IT background has such a massive advantage over the financial like people with financial background, and and that's what got me hooked. I, and I started digging more and more. Mm -hmm. So we've been in crypto since 2016. Was there ever a moment? when you thought about quitting it, about leaving the crypto space for good? I, I would say for me, no, because I always, uh, when I had like downside, for example, the market crash and I didn't anticipate it, I always was like, okay, I, I need to learn more. I need to like manage that is better. And, and it's all like, like my, my, like, like really like feedback loop from the market on, on how good you are actually at like, like being part of the ecosystem, like, especially like, like how knowledgeable are your ecosystem? It, it was really like a metric for me to measure. Uh, so I, I have never actually had any thoughts about leaving crypto. The more I'm in crypto, the, the more I see it's, it's a massive opportunity that, 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 that can transform the whole financial markets. And uh, also like it has any, like a lot of implications into, in, into another verticals. And, and really like, I think that the, 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 my, what I'm super excited about the most is like the edge of innovation. It's always moving. So, so in crypto, you are never bored. And that's what I like about it. Mm -hmm. Cool. What do you consider your biggest achievement in crypto? So I think that with, uh, the, 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 the biggest one is uh, that uh, with Victor Fisher, uh, who is uh, my partner in the Rockaway Blockchain Fund and with the support of Rockaway, which is our parent company, we could manage a fund or we could manage to build a fund that is managing today roughly 300 million of assets from like pretty much zero. Like we, we in, in 2000, uh, I would say 18, 19, we were quite small managing just, 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 I would say few million, like tens, like small tens of millions. But then, then with the growth of the crypto market, we, we, we could raise more money. We could raise a, a, a big fund. And now we, we have the ability to really support the founders uh, and as a, as a professional VCs and, and, and really help them to get on like a global level. Mm -hmm. Cool. What is the most ridiculous or funny thing that you have ever experienced or maybe have done in crypto? I think it, it really is like often there are like these token designs that are like quite surprising, like what, what, what they actually mean, because sometimes it can be like really innovative token design. Like some people call it innovative, some call it bullshit because you, you just you are just never like you just can you you can hardly anticipate like whether it's going to be useful or not. Not for example like the nouns, uh, the 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 nouns NFT ecosystem. It's like there is a noun that is like auction every day. It's 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 auction typically for like fifty to hundred fifty ETH. People are coming in, but it really if you translate it into the financial terms, it really represents just a share in like a company that you have like vote on, uh, and 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 you know like the whole purpose of the company is. Uh, to attract more people to buy nouns for for more expensive yeah mm -hmm. so i think like so 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 the pretty much the whole experience is about like how do you like make the shares more attractive for newcomers so you you don't you don't have to do like any real product or you can but but the question is like whether the nouns um, will be doing it I, I i don't know but it's all about like attracting people to to be participants 
and, and they are selling it as a, as a, as a unique NFT, mm -hmm. like one share every day. I think that's quite interesting. I, I, I find this quite ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any investment decision that uh, you really regret? I would not say so. I think like we are always like learning. Uh, I mean, you as an investor, you are always unhappy. Yeah? So you regret a lot of investment decisions. And, and the reason why, because if, if you invest into a successful company, you always wish you have invested more. <laughs> but if you, if you invest in unsuccessful company, you lose the money. Yeah? So, mm -hmm. so as an investor, you are always like mildly unhappy. Mm -hmm. Now, moving to more general questions about crypto. Uh, going forward, what areas of crypto do you think are going to be more, most attractive from an investor's viewpoint? I think that that really depends on what kind of investor you are. I think the DeFi is now uh, at, at a much more maturing stage than it was uh, two, three years ago. So it, it is not that attractive for like early stage venture funds. I mean, the mo most of the DeFi, though like as, as, as an early stage fund, you really look for the edge of innovation. For example, I'm now super excited about NFTs in a particular way uh, of financialization. Because for example, uh, you have all these high value NFTs like CryptoPunks or Bored Apes or Azukis or, or the other block species like Fidenzas. And mm, right now they are not traded very often. Some of them are more than other, but in reality, the, the highest value um, are really difficult to price for a certain moment in time because the, the, the most rare pieces are traded very, 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 not very often. Yeah. So, so this, this is causing that you can use the NFTs in the financial space, like you can borrow against them, but always at like very conservative loan to value. And even if you have a collection that is high value, like CryptoPunks, then you, you, you deposit it into a lending platform. So you can borrow like to 40% LTV, which is like very, I would say a very capital inefficient. And especially if you have like more rare one, which is definitely not floor, you still can only do 40% to floor. So I think understanding the real valuation of NFTs is what I was super excited and I am still super excited about these days. And so that's why I was leading around lately called Deep NFT Value, which is pretty much the, the best team I found into NFT, like using advanced ML methods to pretty much crack this. So I think like for early stage funds, coming back to your question, it's about like understanding the edge of innovation. I particularly like the NFT vertical and the financialization, but, but that, that's that part. Then there is a part of the DeFi, uh, which is for example, insurance or derivatives. If you look at the insurance landscape, it has still hasn't been cracked on in a decentralized fashion. You have like the only, or the market leader is Nexus Mutual, like comparing to traditional insurance companies, like super small, it manages few hundred million where the traditional insurance companies manage billions. So, so that's another angle. Derivatives, there is no like on-chain derivative products that, that, that are like capital efficient and work really well, mainly because of the cross-margining. You cannot cross-margin across positions. And, I, and, the second, and the third vertical, which I find interesting, is the infrastructure. We told in 2018 that the, with the new generation of layer ones, like Avalanche, Solana, Near. The product, the, the, the problem of scaling will be resolved, but apparently it is not, yeah? And there is still like a lot of challenges, like what are the trade-offs between decentralization and performance? So I think there is still like a lot to improve, either on the layer one level or the middle level, or on the bridge level, how do assets, how do you transfer assets cross chain? So uh, for me as an early stage investor, these are like the areas I'm looking at uh, and I find the highest upside in there. Mm -hmm. uh, we are in a bear market now. Yeah. What impact is it having on investment in the space? I think the amount of venture capital that is being deployed into uh, early stage project has decreased dramatically over the last two months. It pretty much all started with the Terra crash where uh, many of the most recognized uh, venture funds were hit. Uh, and the whole, it, it re pretty much tanked the whole market. And the implication is, um, you may think that the secondary market is not affecting VC market, it does in a delayed sense. And in the reason how it does it, that the schedule of deployment is really, or the pace is like slowing down. Uh, and, and it slowed down dramatically. Uh, the reason is, 
uh, there is no easy money to be made on flipping. So only like the fundamentally long investors uh, have the comfort of, of, of investing and they now see, okay, we have more time to decide because there are no hedge fund like front running us. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that's the reason what, I, what, what, what we see as, as an investor is it really helps us more to build like relationship with the team, really try to develop like the unique strategy, like how we can help them. So I particularly actually like this market because it, it, it gives me edge over people who are like more aggressive uh, on investing. Mm -hmm. What is your take on the future of Bitcoin? Is it uh, going <laughs> to become a proper means of payment or is it uh, going to stay pretty much a store of value? Uh, I, I have never seen a Bitcoin to be a mean of payment and there are no data I know of that would support the adoption for payment has been increasing over time. Any, any dramatically, uh, mostly because most of, the, most of the holders, they want to hold Bitcoin for, for a long time. They don't want to use it as a, as a medium of exchange. And, and this base is likely not going to change. Even if there are like new investors coming in, they are buying Bitcoin, not because of they can pay with it, but because they can it hold for a longer time. It's like a diversification asset that mm -hmm. is like globally transferable and divisible. Uh, so I don't really see Bitcoin uh, transforming to be a way of payment, though I, I, I can see the value proposition in, in the store of value, uh, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you think about stable coins, especially in the wake of the USD disaster? Uh, can stable coins really be stable? I think that depends on, on the design. Like you have the collateralized version of stable coin like USDT or USDC. And, and that really uh, depends on the trust into the issuer and whether they can keep the reserves to, to, to support like one to one pack. Mm -hmm. uh, so they can definitely be stable. But not algorithmic stable coins. Uh, algorithmic, I think that's another question. Like, like if you, um, I, I, I think like there are many people who are saying that algorithmic stable coins are not possible after the crash of, of Terra. I think that they can be, but you have to like, create an ecosystem of like checks and balances that would really prevent the outflow of liquidity from the ecosystem like all at once. Like what happened in, in Anchor on Terra, it pretty much resulted on like outflow of like 17 billion from a protocol in a matter of like two or three days. I have a hard time like seeing any bank like in a, in a real world with like sustaining such, such withdrawal. Uh, and that, that, that's what re pretty much caused the crash. Of course, the design was, was not prepared to do that. And, and, and people uh, who knew the Terra ecosystem really well, they, they were expecting this, this might be coming. But there is a lot of people who, who didn't expect that because they didn't start to study the protocol well enough. So I think eventually it, it, it will be possible. And I believe there will be a non-collateralized alg algorithmic stable coin. But I think that it's, it's still like, um, early, unless there is some kind of a regulation that, that is going to affect the global space, which will prevent like developments of this. Because for example, in, in Europe, uh, with, with the introduction of Mika, uh, like they are pretty much not very supportive of the algo stable coins. In the US, I, I would say it's, it's, uh, it's also very similar. Mm -hmm. You've just mentioned uh, regulations. Uh, in your opinion, what would be the ideal crypto regulation? I think it really depends on like what kind of person are you, whether you like are a believer in, in free markets or whether you are a believer in, in, in more controlled or more governed um, system. I don't think there is any ideal regulation. Um, so regulation is there, you know, to protect the, the retail uh, from losing money. And regulation is there to, to prevent anti-money laundering. And so the countries make sure like the taxes are paid uh, in, in the jurisdiction where they should be. So I would say regulation focusing on these two elements and always not an, an, as the primary aspect of regulation, rather than like taking more control uh, into the hand of regulators is, is the way how it, how it should be done. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, another question. 
is about interoperability. Mm -hmm. How far are we from solving that issue? I think the issue is actually already solved on the, on the, on the bridge level. There are general purpose solutions, for example, Axelar or, or, or Layer Zero or Hop Protocol or Abacus, that, that, that if not are already live, will be live very soon. And I think right now it's for the market to determine which of these platforms are going to lead the market. Because historically, like six or one year ago, the market was very fragmented. And this was like, I would say it was very problematic. You, you went to Terra, for example, for Ethereum, you had to use Shuttle Bridge. You, you had to go to, to Solana, you, you had to uh, use the Wormhole Bridge. Yeah, and you, you went to Near, Rainbow, you went to Avalanche, they have their own bridge. So all these bridges has like very different trade-offs, especially on like custody of, of the assets that are stored on the bridge. Um, but, but I would say that was like the bridge situation or the bridge um, era of, of, of zero. We are now seeing like the general purpose bridges, like as, as I said, Axlar or, or, or layer zero or, or other, which are bringing the, which are, I would say, which have the ability to, uh, to really consolidate the market. And the market will decide what is the, the best trade off uh, in terms of like performance and speed and security. And I believe like one of these general purpose uh, bridges will, will win. Mm. What is hampering mass adoption of crypto? Do we have to wait for <laughs> some kind of a killer app that would take it to a new level? I think it's actually regulatory. Mm -hmm. Because the reason why, I mean, the worlds are disconnected uh, today. And I think everybody sees it like very well. And people are arguing, OK, but what are the real world crypto apps? And they're arguing like there are no real world crypto apps. So crypto doesn't have like a real world use case. But the, but the reason what I see is in, in the speed of development. Yeah, like if you do like crypto native app or digi digitally native app, it, 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 uh, it moves, let's say, with the speed of one. But if you touch anything real world, the, the real world would moves always like 10x, like slower. Yeah. So assuming you do anything with real world, you are always have to keep up with the pace of the real world. So we have high opportunity cost not doing it on like digitally native. And, and the reason why the real world is so slow because blockchain operates with financial assets that are under regulatory uh, guide uh, under regulatory i would say restrictions so anytime you do anything at at, at the real world level you, you have to seek consensus from all these all these bodies uh, and it takes long time so i would say if 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 we could get these both worlds to to move at at, at comparable speeds that that would really uh, get us much more adoption in in the real world. Having a clarity on on the regulatory side, on like how to issue tokens, uh, what what regulations do we need, what regulations we don't need, uh, how do we transfer like the ownership on chain? How does it translate to the, for example, to the state level? For example, of like it, it's amazing to do like for example. Uh, like I want to sell you a house, yeah. Now I, I have to deposit <coughs> the amount, the principal to the notary. Then the house is transferred uh, from me, from as a seller to the buyer, and then the notary sell uh, puts uh, takes the principal and give it to the seller to me after after it is uh, after the ownership is 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 changed in the state registry. This could be done in a smart contract very easily, but the problem is all these state. Uh, agencies and all the whole state apparat have to recognize that this is the way how you do sell your property. Yeah, so I think that that's uh, uh, really like ability of the of the regulators and of, of the of the of the government bodies to be able to accommodate the, the the crypto technology is really what will allow us to to bring really crypto to the mainstream use cases. Mm -hmm. What is your take on anonymity in crypto? Should crypto remain anonymous? That's a good question. Crypto is not anonymous today. I don't think it is. You are always leaking your data like on exchanges, on, on, on lending platforms. And assuming you, 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 you transfer your fiat to an exchange, you already have to have a KYC. Then you withdraw it to your wallet. There is a high likelihood that the wallet you, that you withdraw the, the crypto to is your wallet. And since then you can trace with uh, chain analytics tools, like who, like what is the probability 
of ownership of, of the wallet. Oh, oh, of course, you can obfuscate it through mixers like Tornado Cash. Whether this should be possible, I, I don't have an opinion on that, but the regulators, as, as we are seeing, especially in Europe, uh, are not uh, a big fans of this solution. So yeah. eventually we will see that, the, that these mixers will probably be outlawed and the, and the funds that will be deposited into them will not be accepted, for example, on an exchange. I'm not sure if I, I probably don't like it because I'm a more participant like you 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 should be uh, able to do like what whatever you 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 plan with your with your assets but uh, it's likely not going to be uh, possible or it will be always possible but you will be penalized for you do, doing so mm -hmm. and my final question is about web 3 in what way is Web3 going to disrupt the existing Web2 economies? I think what, what really, uh, like, like Web3 is disrupting like a lot of different, I would say, verticals. One of them is, is finance that, that we discussed. But, but really, the, the, the next vertical is, for example, like how do you structure a company? Like, like I'm always um, articulating that, for example, if you if you have a DAO, it's pretty much an, an organization like LLC somewhere. So so assuming you have a DAO, it doesn't make you have like some kind of like magic organization. And we are coordinating people, and all the same pr principles apply. But what it allows you is like to to have the ownership and to have the settlement of assets on on chain and the transparency, which I think have a will have a real implication on the globalization of the workforce. Yeah, so that's that's like one angle. Then we are seeing like disruption of the of the ip stack in 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 uh, uh in in relation to for example like this uh this this uh lores or or universes like for example you have a like you have a warcraft universe and 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 the game and the experience of, of the warcraft universe can only be, be built by blizzard now we are seeing the race of like this collaborative ip environments like the board tape environment or the cyber brokers or doodles where the ownership or the IP really belongs to the people who, who own that character and he can build an experience around it. So I think that's another, that, that's another, uh, that's another angle how you can disrupt the existing entertainment industry. And then there is, I would say, we can, we can really dive into this much deeper. I think it, it has really like a lot more implications uh, that maybe we don't even understand now. Or for example, music, yeah, like you can, Music, I would say it's, it's very early. There are like, there, are, there is this concept of music NFTs, but nobody actually knows like what, what, will be the, what will be the design that actually works right now. Because right now the music NFTs are probably the niche and niches NFTs of all of them. And, and, and people are still looking like, what is the right design? So we can put, should we put like the song as an N NFT? Should, should it be like a claim to play it or should, should it be a ref share from the, from, from the payments that you, that you get when people are playing the song? So, so Web3 disrupts all these verticals uh, and that's so pretty much exciting about it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you for your insights, Dushan. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me again. Thank you.